Hi everyone. I'm ho I'm hoping you're having a great uh, weekend, uh, long weekend for our Canadian friends. Um, Thanksgiving Monday is uh, just around the corner. And um, before I get started, let's put on our thinking cap. This is a Blue Jays cap, which I got from uh, Vaughan, just north of Toronto, I suppose. First place I've been. Uh, uh, first time I've been to Vaughan, I, I kind of descended on Vaughan from northern Ontario. And I wasn't sure where I was, and everybody was saying, Van, Van, it's like, are they telling me to go back to my van, or I was tired. Anyway, uh, Blue Jays, great warbird, very predatory. And before we get started, I just want to shout out to Inky Crickdahl again. Um, he did ask me where my ASL cup was, so I decided to make my own, guys. I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, here we go. That's my, uh, my, uh, my, uh, ASL cup. So you got here, uh, Corporal Hiotis, written in Greek. All the graphics have been redrawn and from Vassal, I suppose. And then here's my ASL logo. So it's in Greek, Alpha Sigma Lambda. And, uh, it's a play on words because, uh, I guess in, um, ASL, there's a lot of math there. So you've got lambda functions, summation functions, alpha in terms of line of sight. It's uh, pretty nifty. And uh, I went a little step further. I also got um, an ASL uh, mouse pad, right? And somewhere around here, I should have an ASL pen as well. Chances are I'm using it somewhere. Should have an ASL pen. Does that mean channel merch? I don't know. We'll look into it. Oh, there it is. Uh, here's uh, an ASL pen as well. With the Hyotis logo on it. Yeah, it's pretty nifty. Oh, I got two. Oh, geez. I should do a channel giveaway at uh, since reaching a, a battalion strength of viewers. But uh, the last time I tried doing a giveaway, and it was... Um, a used game of uh, Beyond Valor, a ladder edition, then go so well. So all things to think about, channel merch and, and giveaways, we'll see how things work out. Yeah. So um, with no further ado, uh, what I'd like to do is an after action report on scenario ITR 12 Sawabowski's slapdown because it would go hand in hand with Jim Bishop's latest blog. Let's see if I got that handy. And I do. I'll just shift it over here to this screen. So I will provide a link to this, uh, uh, to this blog. It's called uh, Control Freaks, and it's all about uh, the importance of how to gain control. And there's also an example and a mention of mopping up. Now, I'm not going to go into a detailed example of a, a mop-up operation, but essentially, essentially all it is is in, during your prep fire phase, you declare mopping up, and you go TI, which means temporarily immobilized. And then, um, depending on uh, who is in the building, uh, you might gain control of all the building hexes without actually having to traverse a unit throughout that building. Why that is important, I'm going to explain to you by doing this after action report on this specific scenario. And before we go there, we're going to do a scenario overview, and I'm going to tell you how I like to read the scenario card, okay? And uh, that it's also important information. So let's, let's go to the scenario card. Let's minimize this. Right. Sabowski slap down. What I like to do first is go straight to the historical aftermath, the after action report. So to make a long story short, um, the scenario aftermath is actually a key important element in the scenario because it gives you a hint as to what the scenario designer uh, is aiming to replicate here. So if it was a German loss, he probably is biased towards creating a scenario that will lend um, lend credence to a, a Polish victory. 
in this case. So to make a long story short, the Germans easily overcame the first strong point but met stiff resistance at the second. Gretsch force was blunted and could not advance no further. Colonel Saubowski ordered a counterattack and Polish infantry skillfully maneuvered to the flanks and cut off the Germans uh, and bloody. Close quarter fighting ensued. Sobowski's uh, soldiers destroyed the attacking force. They had cut off and took many prisoners. The Germans eventually fought their way back to the barricade to rescue their beleaguered comrades, but found no trace of them. Wow. So this takes place in uh, Poland, September 1939. The date is also important. Keep in mind that after a certain date, there are key important elements that can differentiate how your forces will perform. For example, pre-1943, I'm not going to give you the exact date, but I, maybe I could. If you look at the rat charts, right? The rat charts are your uh, ASL tables. For example, let's go to uh, Panzerfausts. Pre-October 1943, the Germans do not have Panzerfausts. And don't forget, Panzerfausts can be used against infantry in, in buildings, for example, with 16 firepower factors, right? And then if you're playing the Americans, another example, with the Americans, if you look at the nation, nationality traits, right? Again, uh, lo and behold, uh, pre-1944, the Americans also used the red two hit numbers. So that scenario data is of utmost importance. Okay, so we read the aftermath first, we read the his history. So this is basically an uh, attack on Warsaw by uh, the, by the uh, 3rd Battalion, 23rd uh, Infantry Regiment, 11th Infantry Division against the uh, Polish 21st uh, Infantry Regiment. Once you've done that, and you've kind of also looked at the uh, OB, you need to clearly understand the victory objective, or mission in this case. The Germans win at game end by accumulating greater than or equal to 22 victory points. VPs equal five VPs for each roadblock removed, and there's two of them. And in, the, in your OB, you have six demo charges. Six attempts to um, to remove the roadblock. The other thing you'd like to check is to make sure if the uh, engineers here are also sappers. And if they're sappers, they have a handicap uh, clearance rule. I believe it's a minus two to their clearance rule. But it does not say here that um, the German 548s are sappers. They're simply engineers. So. I think the most effective way of, of clearing the roadblock is with a, a nice demo charge. And that would count five victory points each. Yeah, so that's a total of 10 uh, victory points for you to clear these, uh, these uh, uh, roadblocks. And the roadblocks, by SSR, I believe, must be uh, set up within two hexes of L10. So no hanky-panky in terms of putting the, the roadblocks all the way to the rear and handicapping the German player. The, it's really, L10 is really close to where the Germans set off. All right, and then uh, plus three VP for control of each building, M12, O11, O9, plus four victory points for control of each building, H9, L7, plus 10 VP for control of uh, building N4 total of 37 VPs possible. You got out of 37, you got to get 22. That is your objective. Not destroying the Russian, the Polish OB. It doesn't matter. Casualties don't matter. Prisoners don't matter. But they do in, in the sense that they, they do in, in, an, uh, off, in an indirect way or maybe a direct way. Because here you also are talking about control of each building, which ties in to Jim's latest blog. And um, I think we will learn an important lesson. So I, I covered more or less 
what I need to uh, understand from my um, scenario card. Um, now, with that said, I think it's it's um, it's uh, great to go uh, into the AAR, and uh, let's take a look at the uh, German OB. But before I do that, what I like the other thing I'd like to talk to you about is that. As you know, uh, I recently played my first game face-to-face -face, uh, last summer. And I was talking to uh, Dino. Dino, jeez, I forget his last name. But I was talking to Dino, old age guys. Anyway, um, I was talking to Dino. And Dino is a, an experienced player in ASL. He's played a lot of games face-to-face. -face. He would... I think he would run face-to-face -face games at his home. I'm not sure. The first thing he talked to me about, because we had this discussion, Vassal versus face-to-face, -face, coffee, is an important element is your demeanor and how you can play a poker face against your opponent. So if you're dealing with, in this scenario, for example, right, this scenario, for example, right here, if you're dealing with hip units, the pole set up as if the Germans enter off board. So you, there's complete concealment. There are some dummy counters. And the poles may set up less than or equal to two squad equivalents, hip, and any SMC support weapon set up with them. So you can have up to four half squads, hip, in this game. And the element of concealment in hip adds a little bit of a poker element to the game. If you can maintain a good poker face in this game, you won't reveal your setup and your predicament to your opponent. So having that poker face is key to winning this game as the polls. If you don't have a poker face and you kind of exasperate at your performance, and you show emotion, it'll go downhill real quickly. So that's the discussion that we were having with, with Dino. And, and Dino kind of said, look, you know, the important element um, in playing face-to-face -face is you can read your opponent's uh, expression. He can reveal his hand to you by being able, being able to read his body language which is something to consider. And while I was playing this game, although it wasn't face-to-face, -face, we had Skype on and we our cameras on, similar to what I have now. So that's an important element as well. All right, let's go on with the AAR and see what happens. Uh, where is Vassal? There it is. So here's where how my opponent set up. And these demarcation lines is uh, where exactly uh, you can set up. And as you can see, well, if you can't see from here, I can show you over on the scenario card. There are 26 first line, well, six elite and 20 first line German squads versus, in the initial phase, seven, seven first line Polish and seven green units. And these green units act exactly as conscripts, three movement points, Breakdown of of, um, of the support weapons reduced, I believe, two points or one. Uh, I don't remember, but I have to look at the rule book. Okay. Unless they're stacked with a leader. So it, it looks like a major, um, a major defeat, a pending major defeat by the Poles. Now, for the hip units, you have two choices. I find you can either set them up in a location like this and try to ambush uh, the German player while they're trying to dash across the street, or uh, this is what my opponent could not see one, two, three, four half squads set up on the second level of the building. So, unless this person occupied the building, in a certain way, according to the mop-up rules, and when TI and declared mop-up, 
I would maintain my poker face and let him advance. At the end of the game, if you didn't blow up the roadblocks, or you tried wasting all your demo charges trying to kill units as opposed to clearing your objective, all you got to do at the end of the game is pop up a couple of these soft squads. Hey, buddy, you don't have control of your of your of these buildings. Reduce the victory points down to size, and lo and behold, here's your loss. So let's see how this thing yeah, unfolds. Having little issues here with uh, Vassal in this uh, beautiful uh, chart, and. Um, Here's the setup, more or less. We uh, the, the Polish player set up as if these fellows were off board, so they're all concealed, plus we got dummy counters and concealment terrain. And here we have the first turn where we're looking for concealment. And rather than reveal these units, I inadvertently uh, forgot to hit the second level, but my opponent didn't see it. Um, rather than uh, reveal my units to deny him Concealment, I said, nope, keep concealment. Concealment is important. And we're right off the bat into movement phase, and all these beautiful stats of German infantry are advancing on what? These measly units of Polish uh, squads, half of them are green, and all my great units are in the back trying to uh, defend um, the roadblock. I don't think my setup was quite genius at all, but um, it seems to have worked. And now the big joker is this fellow here, I hipped him right away uh, because uh, he he can either be on board or come in with, uh, with the squads, the reinforcements on turn four, and I chose to bring him on at a later time because these reinforcements, and they're all elites, can come either from the north, up there, south, or west edges. So north, south, or west, where the green arrows are. All right. So there's only... Um, three... Uh, three um, three logs to go through, but I'll just show you uh, perhaps the first and the last. We'll skip through the, uh, the other meat of it. So now it's the Polish turn and I'm just trying to skulk. And, and, and by skulk, I think I'm going to do another video about skulking. Um, my opponent, I think, has mastered skulking. And, and um, I learned from that. What skulking is, is not necessarily setting up in the rear. It's setting up somewhere where, where, you, can, where you can incite your, your opponent to prep fire and forfeit movement while denying him the opportunity to fire at you during your defensive fire phase or their defensive fire phase. Right. So we'll go over an example with that as well. Basically, it's un, unimpeded, unhindered advance. After all is said and done. And as far as this, per, my opponent is, is concerned, this uh, unit here that is concealed is on the ground level. Never mind that there is a staircase here. This, the, the other unit below him is actually hip. It cannot be seen. A waltz walks into uh, here. And I have an AT gun there, 37L, and the 37L uh, only has AP ammunition. And if you don't know what that means, check out Chapter C. There is AP equivalency. I think it's also on the um, thought it was also on the uh, this baby here. Or it should have been a note. Anywho, so I ultimately first fired there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I first fired there. Boom, put four residuals. Looks like the fire is ineffective. 
I'm rolling on the two hits. My defensive fire, even intensified, nearly broke the gun, I believe. The advanced fire, the advanced fire is not that uh, cool. Let's maximize the board. Yeah. Let's maximize the board and see the all the action here. I'm gonna try and keep my opponent's uh, uh, identity um, uh, anonymous. Okay, and that's basically the first turn. Let me pause so I can load the uh, uh, the next. Uh, the next log. Okay, so now we're at uh, towards the Polish turn two. Rolls for weather. There isn't any. And ultimately, the squad that came up in MAM 13 went into close combat with the inexperienced squad. And this inexperienced squad beat him and got grabbed a, a, a shiny new um, German LMG and this killer stack just advanced and they're all concealed just going from building to buildings nice and slowly um, here we have another face-to-face -face confrontation uh, Waltz managed to go across the street yeah it's very tight quarters Buildings left, right, and center. That is my AT gun prep firing there. Notice that I'm trying to maintain concealment. And here I am, I am now skulking, or trying to, to the best of my ability. So I'm denying my opponent a defensive fire face. <laughs> Where is he going to fire? Uh, and subsequently, if you cannot fire, ooh, that was a that was a snake eyes, snake eyes, and that was uh, an eight up to attack. Snake eyes does not cower, and ultimately I break. Goodbye, Charlie. Charlie's still here, by the way. Some ineffective fire as well. Road phase, trying to keep score of the German VPs down here, but uh, it's fine. Well, this, this fellow tried advancing, but he, he's, he got, got half squatted, I suppose. Maybe he was a half squad. Ah. Here we are. Clear, clear line of events. Oh. Here's another killer stack. What's underneath here? Ooh, another 437. And clearly, clearly, the buildings are in his grasp right now. Some ineffective part of uh, fire on the part of the uh, green squad here. He looks like he's locked in close combat. And we have a close combat, we had a close combat here which was won by the Germans. And these are row houses, so technically they can fire there, but they can fire here. Going for ambush, I suppose. The 
this guy exposes himself and look at that stack. We got two three eights, flamethrowers, demo charges, and stallers at 10 minus 2 liter. I named them stout. continue. So where are we at now is turn three and the reinforcements, the Polish reinforcements come in uh, right here. They come in next turn. All right, Polish turn three. It's an eight turn scenario. The Germans have made great headway and the casualty bins More or less one to one odds. You know, one squad versus a squad and a half. Now, keep in mind that there's a rear rear guard to try and prevent um, uh, the reinforcements, the Polish reinforcements, from coming into his rear, and uh, and uh, smacking the heck out of the German player. All you need is uh, an enemy unit in your rear, one broken squad, and then everything starts going south real quickly. Yeah. All right, I'm doing a dosi do. We're pushing back real units, putting forward dummy units using a salt move, exchanging their uh, locations. And here I am against skulking. You know, I, I could try an eight up three shot, but wh why should I? Um, why should I, if there's no fire, why well, use the fire extinguisher? There's more defensive fire. And uh, he attempted to fire there, and I just rem reminded the fellow, hey, there's a row house there. You see that big black bar? It's a row house. Can't fire across the uh, black border. Black border? I should have said a, a, a dark, thick hex side. Dark thick, dark X side. Ah, you know what it is. And now we're dealing with an effective advancing fire. Uh, here come the control markers. Let's review the victory look, uh, victory uh, conditions. The Germans win at game end by accumulating at game end. So this fellow here is putting down control markers because as far as he's concerned, the building is his. OK. This is where the poker face comes in and says, is this game end? Are you going to reveal your hand? Of course not. You gotta be a devious little, um, I guess you can call me a Greek or a devious Canadian. Canadians can be devious as well. Why not? Oh geez. Tried to fire with the AT gun, didn't work. So let's go here and continue. So now we've got a lot of face to face combat here. We just revealed a a uh, unit that was a dummy. There he gets bounced back. And here 
we're advancing, the, the German player is advancing, but rather than use the DC charge against the, the, uh, the roadblock, it goes against the infantry. We're conducting some defensive fire. Here's another DC charge coming in to play. Well, don't forget, he has six. One was set, two were set, or thrown. Or actually, one was uh, thrown. The other one was not that successful, I suppose. And here we are now, instead of, we have no choice, it's point blank fire, we have to fire, we have to defensive fire. AT gun is trying to fire area. For one reason or another, uh, German players deciding to skulk or move up with his rear guard which are just a couple of units. Now I guess it's uh, German turn four, his movement phase, let's see. Yeah. And uh, the Skulkaroo. My defensive fire phase, I'm trying to annihilate the units that are approaching and now uh, my rear guard is opening fire Tarnowski 457 with a heavy so here I am getting right but rather ineffective That was not uh, a clear line of sight, or was it? Oh well. The DC charge seems to have been ineffective. Yep, this is the advancing fire phase already. So one DC charge already, uh, already wasted. Hmm. Well. And the sniper here, I think he just broke the crew. There you go. German sniper broke the crew. And the crew is in cover, so he does not need to rub, really. It's not need to abandon his. More advancing fire, none of it was effective. And now we have some close combat. There you go. And let's see the outcome of all this close combat here. We have another close combat. Take three or four close combats. One, two, three, four, five. Five close combats. We're rolling for ambush. We end up in melee. Don't ask me how. And trying to resolve the one in, uh, in K9. I just noticed a casualty reduction there. Here we end up in melee. Melee. There, I believe we ended up uh, with a. Uh, Casualty reduction? Yeah, casualty reduction. And another melee. There. Melee. None of these close combats were effective. I wonder if the German player had a choice to go into close combat or not, or just to stay, hold his ground and try and use his 
infantry firepower. And now we were doing uh, concealment gain. And I believe that this we're on almost onto our last log and I'm 35 minutes in. Uh, usually some of my videos last 45 minutes. So I guess we can go through the last video as well. All right. So this is the last log. Um, and we're coming towards the end. It's going to be Polish turn four. Last turn, a German player engaged on all these close combats. This fellow broke by virtue of a sniper attack. Uh, and I have to decide where the uh, reinforcements will appear and what I'm going to do with them. Okay, then. Just tidying up some uh, some offboard counters, rolling for weather, there ain't any. And now I think I am ready to decide. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to decide where to put the uh, Polish players, the Pol Polish units. And check this out. Getting them ready here. Putting them in little fire groups. Getting the uh, off-grid uh, ready. There we go. Trying to align this thing. Dexterity issues. And there they are. Here's some more. So this is the rally phase, and I'm putting everybody where they're supposed to be. Doing some rallying. Let's see uh, what's going on here. Now, I can't show you what's underneath here because that's my opponent's uh, units. But I have Dotsky going to close combat, possibly with 2 to 1 odds, minus 1 for my leadership DRM. Here, I have another 2 to 1 odds with a minus 1 leadership DRM. Here, here is my 10 minus 3 uh, leader with a dismantled MMG. And unfortunately, unlike the... Uh, Unlike the uh, German dismantled MMGs, I cannot fire it until I mantle it. But he has a minus three DRM and eight firepower factors. He's going to pop into P13 and take a nice pot shot at, at him, whatever that might be. This unit, uh, it has a, a nine minus one, looks like a common SAR. Three, uh, four, five, eight elite units with an MMG that's going to come in here or go in close combat there and uh, three lonely squads that can easily offset the balance uh, of power there uh, without overstocking them of course so this is probably the last turn and you can imagine why um, well and if you don't have an imagination watch and learn let's see let's uh, zoom out a little bit can we zoom out uh, zoom back in. Zoom back in and let's see the action. All right, here we go. So that was an assault move in, right onto the board. Uh, reveals a unit. Rolls. Not much. Nothing much there. Uh, another fire reveals the unit. There's a broken unit there as well under DM. But now, where is he going to route? He can't route there. Probably can route here. So there's opportunity fire there. Opportunity fire is a great tool because you can fire at full firepower after you resolve um, what's involved in defensive fire and movement. It's great. Now we're rolling.
and we have a couple of signs coming up. Sign attack, sniper attack, more rolling on the IFT. That dude is pinned. We have the Steiner uh, under under uh, DM broken due to the advancing fire of uh, Corporal Binsky. Everybody's a Corporal E today. More attacks, and this time from the HMG. More sniper checks. And here's a, a good roll here. Eight down three, and we rolled a five. Random selection, and we got two Yahtzees. Boom. And these units here are going to advance in. They don't have to come in on the movement phase. And that's where uh, the German player called it quits. And that's where I revealed, this is when I revealed my tip units. And I said, really? You don't have control here. You don't have control. Instead of wiping off the, the uh, roadblocks as the, per the victory locations to gain five victory points each. And it could have very well have been done because um, because the German player did manage to uh, bring up two DC charges up to the key locations. And I didn't have a choice as to where to, uh, much of a choice as to where to locate them because, first of all, um, roadblocks act like a wall, which is a protective feature for for anyone going up against it, it can take, the German player can use it as a, as a wall for protection, right? And uh, it doesn't impede infantry, it impedes vehicles, and vehicles are not anywhere in this scenario. They're only there to give the German player uh, up to 10 out of the 22 or 29 uh, victory points that they need, 22. So half of that Half of that was for clearing these two roadblocks. Then these buildings, if my opponent had gone TI and mopped up, um, the outcome could have been different regardless of how much casualties there were. Because this game was not about casualties. It was about getting VPs. Now, if mopping up is still not clear after you've read um, the rule book, uh, perused uh, Jim's blog, and saw this after action report, um, I, I, I'll do another video just just about mopping up. And now the just to be perfectly clear, the the other mistake my opponent uh, could have done was to declare. Uh, no quarter, because the moment you declare no quarter, you cannot mop up. Your 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 right to do mopping up is forfeited, which would also impede you getting uh, a victory in this scenario. And, and the key uh, takeaway for 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 this scenario is, I suppose uh, that despite the uh, enormous advantage in infantry squads, right? Uh, you need to execute your attack with the objective of getting victory points. Not casualty victory points, but victory points as they are defined in the objective. And unfortunately, if you don't do that and you overlook some key elements in the rules, mopping up in particular, you lose. And um, it's unfortunate. Well, fortunate, it was fortunate for me, unfortunate for my opponent. 
So it's not necessarily the dice rolls that matter. Um, so um, I guess this concludes my, my, my segment for today. 45 minutes into, uh, into uh, talking and demonstrating different aspects of advanced squad leader. Um, all I can say is I hope you enjoyed this, um, this video. Uh, smash the like uh, button uh, to help me with the YouTube algorithm. So far, again, much to my surprise, this, this um, uh, channel has been growing week after week. And I hope to continue uh, doing these great videos. We'll see how it goes. Uh, times are tough up here in Canada. Um, it's, uh, it's a bit worse than the Ch Chichen Chong movie, uh, Things Are Tough All Over. Despite uh, our great leader somewhat legalizing the uh, green stuff. But anywho, uh, we're, we can't complain. Uh, later on also, I'm going to be taking my son to his uh, football game, Saturday night afternoon or early evening game. And I wish all the Laval Senior um, Academy Panthers good luck in this game and the next. And um, Again, I'd like to thank all my supporters and my subscribers, the new subscribers, as well, as well as the existing ones that were here on this channel since the very beginning and throughout uh, time. Thank you so much. I'm truly blessed to have you as viewers. Until next time, I bid you farewell and happy Thanksgiving again to all my Canadian friends up here in Canada. Take care.